I want to kind of talk to you guys about how I became a Christian in my testimony. This is, this is my story. Okay, so if you have been following me for a long time, then you have probably like watched my abuse story video. And so you know that I do not come from a great home life. I was raised by my grandparents because my parents, my real parents were unfit to take care of me. Basically, my, <laughs> my home life was not a Christian upbringing. <laughs> but when I was little and I was going through all these like with my parents, not my grandparents, but when I was going through all these like abusive things with my parents, I did feel like someone or something was protecting me the entire time. So from that feeling, I felt like there was someone else there watching me and like just watching over me. So I was 10 years old and my cousin had a neighbor. So my cousin's friend was going to a Christian camp and my aunt told my grandmother about the camp. Basically said that um, my cousin had a lot of fun at this camp and he was going for his second week of camp and then she told my grandmother about it and asked if if she would be interested in putting me and my sister in it. <laughs> um, but um, my grandmother, she was like, well, I'm gonna ask them and see if they want to. And I was one, <laughs> I was extremely shy as a kid and then two, I used to, okay, so I had, I went through an abusive childhood, okay, so I did suck my thumb occasionally when I was a 10 year old, I'm not gonna lie, um, kind of embarrassing, I cannot believe <laughs> I'm saying this on YouTube, but yeah, so I was just like, I didn't want to go to camp because I didn't want people to know I sucked my thumb and then I also didn't, um, I didn't want, um, I didn't really want to leave my bubble you know I felt comfortable in my little bubble it was like I don't know I got scared easily doing new things and I still do to this day it makes me extremely nervous to do new things but my grandmother she forced us to go to this camp and um we show up and my sister and I were just like we don't really know what to do we've never been put in this kind of situation so we were kind of hiding in the cabin at first and then my counselor, she came in, she like was like really nice and invited us to come to the chapel, which was just a big gymnasium and they were doing like an introduction kind of thing um, the first day. But anyway, so we end up having a lot of fun at this camp, my sister and I, and it was the, the camp was a week long total. And so it was the fourth day of camp. So on a Thursday, and we were at evening chapel. They did chapel twice a day. And by the way, this camp is not your typical Bible camp. This camp is legit. Like it is so much fun. Um, I made so many friends at this place, like lifelong friends. And it was just, they had games. It wasn't, it was by, it, it focused on God, but it, it wasn't like all you did was sit around and pray and stuff. Like we did that but we also had fun like they made learning about the bible and learning about god fun and that's coming from someone who was not a christian going into this camp like i was not a christian and neither was my sister and my sister had fun at this camp too um so anyway we it was the fourth day of camp and we were at evening chapel and um the man the preacher he he preached like a whole thing about how it was important to accept jesus into your life and this was the first time i had ever heard this speech and i just remember feeling like my heart racing like really really fast and i got really nervous because i felt like he was talking directly to me i literally felt like there was no one else in the room and he was just staring at me and it was really uncomfortable for me um but then he asked everyone to like kneel their um, head and close their eyes. And he was like, no one else in the room is going to be looking at you. But if you feel like God wants you to accept him in your heart today, please stand up and go talk to your 
your counselor in the back of the room and no joke i felt like someone had like pushed me out of my seat <laughs> Because I was just sitting there and I was sitting on my hands and I just kept thinking I'm not doing it I'm not doing it. I'm not standing up because I hated attention like I didn't want any attention on me ever So I was just like I'm not doing it I'm not getting up and it literally felt like someone had like pushed me and then all of a sudden I'm standing up and I'm kind of in like a daze It was almost like I was having an out-of-body experience and I like was watching myself just stand there and so then um, I like got up and I'm like Oh my god, I'm standing. <laughs> and so then I like I just start walking to the back and I go get my counselor and then she takes me over into like a different area and she starts talking to me and she's like, "So why would you stand up?" And I was like, "I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't know." And then she goes she's she goes, "Well, do you want to accept Jesus into your heart?" And I'm like, "I don't know." And then she goes, "Okay." She's like, well, what's your home life like? Are, and um, she's like, are your, is your family Christian? And I, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about like any of this. And then she was like, okay, so are they Jewish? And I'm like, I don't think so. And then, um, then she was just like, she really didn't know what to say because the counselors are just like college kids. But she was trying her best to like navigate the conversation, but I just kept ending every like avenue with I don't know because I really didn't know anything about it and I didn't know why I stood up or anything. I was just lost like the entire time. I was just lost in the conversation and I felt like really kind of dumb and I felt scared and I felt confused. Um, so anyway, she just like prays for me and she's like, okay, well, if you feel like you want to come and talk to me and um, accept Jesus into your heart, then just let me know and I'm here for you. And I'm like, okay. And um, so then I just wanted to like get away from her as quickly as possible. And um, so I left chapel and my friend was waiting outside for me. And then she, it was just kind of awkward because she like knew, I don't know. It was just really awkward. And then we went to um, canteen and got a snack. But anyway, so that night I went to sleep and um, the entire like rest of the day, I just could, I couldn't get that conversation and chapel out of my mind. Like it was, it was just like the only thing I was thinking about, honestly. Um, but I went to sleep that night and I had a dream about Jesus and it was like, it was just a comforting dream where I just felt like, like at home and I felt at peace and um and then I just remember I woke up from that dream and after I woke up from that dream I told her I went and told my counselor I was like I want to be a Christian and then I accepted Jesus into my heart um which was the easy part <laughs> um so then I like I accepted Jesus into my heart and I felt like so like on this like cloud nine type of high like I I, I knew I did something good for myself and um but then I didn't know what to do after that so I go home and I just remember I asked my grandmother I was like I was like are you a Christian and then um she didn't really know what to say and she goes well and she's really country she goes well um we're a Baptist <laughs> and I was like what's a Baptist and then she goes she's like she's like well that they just they're part of Christianity and I'm like okay um but that was honestly um, the first time I had ever asked her or talked to her about anything to do with God ever. Um, and and so I I just felt like a new person. I I accepted God into my life, but just because I accepted Him didn't mean I was like free from from suffering. If let's just put it like this. If God wasn't with me, I probably wouldn't be here. And I say probably just as like kind of a cushion word, I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. Because I've had really dark times by myself. And if it wasn't for God and it wasn't if it wasn't for my faith and trust in him that everything was going to be okay, I wouldn't have been here because without God there is no purpose for me I live because of him looking back on my childhood and looking back at my family background it just amazes me that even though God was not a conversation I had with close relatives 
in my family. Um, he still found a way into my life. It just makes me feel so special that God, who created everything, he, he was seeking me. <laughs> like, he's, he was looking for me, and I didn't even know I was supposed to be looking for him, but when I found him, I was so glad I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> All I know is God's plan is not going to look anything like what I planned for myself. So instead of trying to like control the situation and control the timing and like be like, God, just let it happen already. You know, being impatient, I'm just going to wait and I'm going to just enjoy this time of waiting because when whatever it is I'm supposed to do comes, I know I'm going to be busy and I know that... <laughs> I'm going to look back at this time and wish I had enjoyed it more. <laughs> so instead of just being like wishing away time, I'm going to be like, okay, this is my season. My season of life is taking care of my kids. This is my mission right now is to raise my kids, homeschool them, potty train them, be the best mom I can be and um, just be there, you know, be there for my kids the way my mom and dad weren't there for me. And that's my mission right now is to produce some good humans. <laughs> and I just wanted to share all the good that God is doing because I don't feel like the world really acknowledges all the blessings, even blessings in the waiting as much. I feel like we're in a society where we want it now and we want it fast and um, we're very much consumed with us and how that's going to make us look and um, those things are not God. That's not God talking to you. And if you're feeling anxious about something like getting on social media makes you anxious, then get rid of it because nothing that is of God and for God will cause you that much anxiety and pain. I'm not even going to say if you like this video, give it a thumbs up or anything because I <laughs> don't care if you like it. This was more for me and for whoever needed some kind of comfort and peace right now during this crazy time. If you needed to hear it and this message was for you, then um, please give it a thumbs up. If this message was not for you, that is okay. I'm not here to try to down anyone else for your beliefs. Um, so I would respectfully ask that you do not down me for my beliefs. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. I love you guys and that's all. Bye.